Mirio's original. Sisters, this is one of our web crawlers mini episodes. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying our daily mini episodes. Monday through Friday, you will be having an episode every single day during the quarantine and maybe after. We'll see how it goes. So I am Allie Siegel. I'm Melissa Stetton. And I'm producer Maria. You sure are. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be releasing the Zoom uh, section. We probably will, but we're dressed in McDonald's colors today. I'm wearing white. I'm wearing red. And I'm wearing yellow. Yeah, we didn't even plan it. Anyways, we have some emails and- Can I say something really quickly? Yes. Yes. Really quick, go down the line. What's your favorite McDonald's order? Go, Allie. Hash browns. Hash browns? Yeah, you haven't had the McDonald's hash browns? No. No, I have. Aren't they just like, they're like coming in that little paper Yeah, slip. it's like the, yeah. And they're, they're, it's just like a, it's like a, almost like octagonal weird potato oh, shape. Oh, I've had them, but I don't remember. They're great. I like, I, I get a cheeseburger, a small fry, and a small Coke. Mm. Wow. On a McDonald's on a diet. Sometimes I go to McDonald's and I'll just get small fries and a Coke. That's good. Mm. Or like a McFlurry or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, McFlurries. Yeah. I, I'm going to answer, but I'm just going to really quickly just go down this little side note. There was a time maybe like eight years ago where I got a McFlurry for the first time. And the spoon they give you is, long. is like re- re- it's it's thick and it's like <laughs> yeah. it's hearty. And it's like it's like a design. Yeah. And I for like a month would go on the internet and try to find out what, wh- why is this spoon the way it is? <laughs> Who designed it? Like all this stuff. And then I was like, and then what's the difference between like a Frosty and a McFlurry? Mm, what is the difference? A, a Frosty is more like a... Um, it's more like, like a, soft um, serve. Yeah, it's like a hot, it's like an iced hot chocolate. It's like a, Ooh. yeah, it's like a more yeah. of a soft serve But I'm telling you that McFlurry, you should do an episode all on the McFlurry spoon because it is... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was so substantial. Well, you know what I used to think it was? I used to think that it was a straw and a spoon, but it's not. Yeah. But it is hollow. Yeah, it's hollow. That's why I thought it was like, oh, this is a spoon and a straw. You can use it for both. And it has to be thick so that when you're using it as a spoon, everything sucks up. But that's not what it is. Well, now I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah, Yeah, look at the McFlurry spoon. There should be a whole series on this anyway my order is i like um i like a egg mcmuffin um with just with just egg and cheese and um yeah and i also really like the um, the one that's between two pancakes the pancake the mcgriddle or whatever yes see here's the thing i won't eat mcdonald's meat well i you don't need to get that you can still get a mcgriddle without the meat I, I'm still a little sketch about egg. Well, whatever. It's so good. <laughs> I used to eat Jack in the Box. For some reason, like Jack in the Box meat, I'm fine with. Now, not so much. Like in the past, I used to eat a lot of Jack in the Box meat. Um, and in fact, I was at my my best goal weight. The skinniest I've ever been in my life was when I was only eating Jack in the Box. Really? No what joke. were you eating? I was eating um, like anything, like I was tacos. Eating the tacos. I oh. was eating. I was eating breakfast sandwiches. I was only eating Jack in the Box, and I was like 115 pounds. You're like wow. J- you're like Jared from Subway. Yes, except <laughs> minus I don't molest little boys. I only I only molest big boys. <laughs> and there goes a star yeah. <laughs> a minus one star minus one star um but yeah i don't like the mcdonald's meat because they always think show those things where it's like the chicken nuggets are made out of pink goo Ugh. have you ever seen that yes no but w- i have heard about someone finding a beak in their chicken yeah. mcnugget before. yeah stop it yeah no well, I've also heard of rats and fried rats in Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, 
Yeah. So, and also the the hamburgers don't expire. We should do an episode on fast food <gasps> urban legends. Oh, yes. wait. I just idea. remembered. I just remembered something. I actually know someone who could be a guest. Okay. So my friend Morgan Freed, I don't know if any of you guys like have ever heard of like emo night, that thing or yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's one of the creators of Emo Night. Right, Oddly, yeah. He's, he's also my neighbor. Oddly enough, he was a food scientist before he created Emo Night and, like, gone into music. What? And he, he would work for fast food chains, and they would be like, we're creating this salad or this hamburger – we want, but now we want you to do your food science to make it so it lasts for like a year <gasps> and doesn't oh. expire. We got to have him on. Oh yeah, my God, so they, yes. they hire food scientists to make it like to do weird contraptions and add weird like molecules and, and right. chemicals so that the stuff never expires. Because there was that like one McDonald's hamburger that was like somebody kept for like 20 years or something. Yes. And it, nothing happened to it. Yeah. It's so gross. Wow, a food scientist. Listen to this. Yeah. The spoon is an essential part of the McFlurry <laughs> as it helps to mix the ingredients together. Oh. And now what they show here is that you plug it in to where to like, like basically like where you get your drinks and it like spins around to mix oh. everything together for you. Oh, the spoon hooks directly what? onto the machine, which then spins it around and makes the ice cream oh. toppings through the dessert. Interesting. So they they use the spoon as a tool and then we use it as a spoon. Yes, that's exactly. <laughs> the, and who came up with that? I mean, it's just nuts. Oh, okay. Yeah, this spoon that it's like a big square hollow thing. Mm -hmm. oh, who okay. created the McDonald's McFlurry spoon? Oh, there's an article that says, this is why the McFlurry spoon has a big old hollow bottom. Spoiler, it's not a straw. Is this the article that you read? Well, well <laughs> that's the article <laughs> Allie wrote. <laughs> <laughs> his, name is Dave, his name is David Brown. Meet David Brown. He created the, the furry high-speed spoon slash agitator for the McFlurry. In 1985, David co-founded Flurry International with a Taylor Freezer distributor to complete to compete with the Dairy Queen Blizzard dessert. Wow. 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 Mm. I wonder if we can the Flurry sounds good. We should write him yeah. fan mail. David <laughs> David Brown inventor. Inventor. In inventor. McFlurry spoon inventor. I'll never forget I'll never forget the <gasps> the like how into what is it called when you're like when you're um i know Allie's trying to say something i, mean, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't. <laughs> I think he also invented viagra no it says david brown the co-inventor of viagra he can only invent things that are long and hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> maria wow wow oh boy what I was trying to say was he, when you want to learn more about something. In, <laughs> inquisitive. Yeah, but like what's Cur that feeling called? Curious. The curiosity. The curiosity. <laughs> I'll yeah. never forget the curiosity. I felt it was unlike any curiosity I've ever felt before. Unlike first any that you've spoon. felt before. Truly. Because wow. everything all, all around me became a question mark. <laughs> You started questioning your own existence. Yes. I said why. There's just a big why. Wow. That's pretty beautiful. Um, well, we should write, write fan mail to David Brown, the inventor of the McFlurry spoon and also potentially the co-inventor of Viagra. Let's make sure that's true before we go <laughs> writing him, telling him how thankful. Yeah. Well, let's get into the emails. Uh, <laughs> okay. Our first, our first email is from B. Melissa, what did B have to say? B says, "Howdy, sisters." Yes. You mentioned the vampire couple here in Austin, and I thought you'd be interested in checking out their wedding photos. I, I have a pal. I have a pal that is close friends with the couple, and she was actually there. Wow. Get ready. It's ridiculous in the raddest way possible, of course. 
Apparently the photos don't do it justice. It looks like- I thought like- that vampires don't show up in photos. Oh, good point. It looks like the couple made enough of a splash with their own ceremony that they have started an event planning business. Wow. Oh, okay, so key points. The couple is considered the king and queen of the city's vampire community. Oh my God. They'd originally- allocated 30 grand for their wedding, but ended up spending four times that amount. 120,000. The Could cake you see me was counting sh- in my head. <laughs> You're like one, two, three. <laughs> the groom or no, the cake was shaped like Dracula's castle and topped with a dragon. Wow. The groom wore a custom armor modeled after Dracula's attire in the movie Dracula Untold. He somehow managed to rock some fangs and green contacts for the whole thing. Wow. She wore a more traditional gown with a crown. And the couple drew inspiration from Phantom of the Opera and Beauty and the Beast while developing the aesthetics of their spectacular bash. Think low-key Kat Von D wedding ceremony. Oh my God, that's (laughs) such a visual. They took an eight-day tour of Romania Dracula's Whoa. country of origin for their honeymoon. Oh my god! And that's there crazy. are links in the Daily Mail. Oh my god! Where have I seen this before? You've seen this before? Yes. I think that this might have been on um, the episode of Dark Tourist. I think he might have shown some clips of this. Oh. Oh. Because this looks familiar to me. That looks crazy. Yeah, that's insane. We got to post some of these on our Yeah, we'll Instagram. post them. We'll post the links. We also have an email from Adam. The subject is we live in a situa- simulation. Duh. Situation. <laughs> we've, we got are- <laughs> we've got a situation. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a simulation. Wow. Wow. Weird coincidence alert. This weekend, I was watching YouTube videos of the amazing Randy, and one of his big claims to fame is disproving all of Yuri Geller's claims. I was thinking of sending you an email about it, since it would be maybe something you could talk about. Then, I wake up and see a special mini episode in my podcast feed about Yuri Geller, and you talk about the amazing Randy. I am freaked out. Literally shaking. We live in a simulation. I wish I sent the email just so I had more concrete proof. Insane. Anyways. That is crazy. That is that pretty is crazy. crazy. Something crazy happened to me. Uh, anyways, you should look at the Amazing Randy's YouTube videos. The dude is a legend. Yeah. Have you guys seen the documentary? The, it's called An Honest Liar. No, I will have to watch it. I feel like I have. It's this guy, James Randy, who's like he debunks all of like mostly Yuri Geller, but he did this amazing thing where he, there's this faith healer, Peter Popov, I think his name was. Mm. And he would have these big, you know, church services where he would, you know, he would call up people by their names or be like, is there a Sarah, you know, Davis in the audience? And, oh, you live at 452 Main Street and you have arthritis and come up here. And, like, he would call people on the audience. People would be like, oh, my God, that's me. And he would, like, you know, say, yeah. like, be gone with your demons or whatever. And so Amazing Randy and his pal were like, how is he doing this? He must be scamming these people. So they got a radio scanner and they went to the event and they heard on the scanner this the preacher's wife who was backstage and was like, he had a little earpiece and was telling, he's like, okay, now go to, there's a Cynthia Davis. She lives at 452, blah, blah. She has arthritis. And so, because when people came in, they would fill out these like comment cards or like healing cards, like what's your name and your address. And so the wife would take them and then tell like go backstage and tell the preacher. So like this guy Randy called him out. I don't think I've seen this. And that guy went bankrupt. It's called, yeah, an honest liar. But it's really great because oh uh, James Randi, he's his partner, ended up being this guy he was with forever, ended up being like not the person that he was, had like a different name. Like it was, I don't want to give it away, but there's like a mystery around like the guy that he's his partner for the last like 20 years or so. It's pretty crazy wow, documentary. Man. That is crazy. Yeah, we should do an episode on like 
yeah, that's faith healer. Yeah, it's really. Anyway, it's cool. Um, we have another email from Kay. Melissa, what does Kay have to say? She says, okay, so I'm standing in my yard doing a little gardening. It's midday. I look up. A plane is flying by. I watch it. All of a sudden, a tiny metallic dot shoots off and it starts traveling adjacent to it. I watch said dot travel across the sky over my head. I call my husband to come outside without taking my eyes off of it, but then it disappeared. That's my UFO story. She's the one who emailed us last week about the bees. Oh, my God. And we were what like, oh, week. you ended on the UFO story. She said, also, today I saw a crow and a hawk battling. Freaking birds, man. <laughs> K. <laughs> I like K. K seems fun. K seems fun. Uh, um, here's an email from Diane Robbins. The curse is from Valerie Worth's A Crone Book of Magical Words. Oh, wow. It's totally unethical, and I would never do it, but it's so warped that it's never left my memory. We ask people to send stuff in. Yeah. Like spells and stuff. I read it decades ago when I was a baby witch, but those days are long past. I got tired of all the fighting between religions uh, about whose God was better, so I said fuck it and gave up on organized religions. It's ace- atheism for me these days, baby. <laughs> love love you girls. Whenever I get a message that you've posted to Patreon or see a new episode pop up on my list, I feel all giddy inside. We need to do more Patreon episodes. Mm-hmm. Your podcast is awesome and brings up so many interesting topics and perspectives. I really appreciate y'all. Peace, Diane. Oh, by the way, I live just a couple of miles from the infamous Waverly Hills Sanitar- Sanatorium. That's a mental institution now. Yeah, Waverly Hills. It's supposedly the most haunted location on Earth. Oh my God, where is it? In Louisville, Kentucky. Kentucky? We should do a mini episode on that. Yes. Literally a couple of miles. I've been there once. It's spooky, especially the body shoot. (gasps) The body shoot. A body shoot. Oh God. Um, and then she gave us the spell to curse an enemy, which I kind of like don't want to read out loud. <laughs> I know. What does it do? Like you don't have to read the spell, but what is... What, it, what, well, what the is, title what of the, the spell, it's to curse an enemy. I'm reading it. Uh, she said it's totally unethical and I would never do it. Yeah, which is uh, why I don't want to read it out loud. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to read it out loud, but there are spells if you want to curse an enemy. (laughs) Well, don't let them know that. (laughs) (laughs) Don't curse us. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, but that's cool. I can see how that would uh, affect her as a child. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) The thing about magic that we've learned is that everything comes back to you times three. So any energy that you put out there will come back to you karmically. Oh, so if you're gonna if you're gonna put anything out there, really make sure that you're you're ready for the repercussions. Nah, I'm good. Um, so Melissa, we have a message from Melissa. We have an email from Melissa. It's not me. Or what does Melissa have to say? Or is it the subject is hi? This is going to be everything I've been meaning to email. Wow. Says hi, I'm bad at writing subject lines unless you're my boss. LMAO. <laughs> so, <laughs> first for a week or so earlier in the spring, in my city, people were zip tying dead geese by the neck to stop signs. Excuse you? No. Like freshly dead geese, so they weren't gross, and eventually they'd get removed by the city, and then a few days later there would be another goose. It was weird. It has since stopped. Uh. What? Okay, then about a month ago, I was driving up to the big city in my state about an hour and a half away. My girlfriend was driving her car ahead of me because I stopped for snacks, me being about 10 minutes behind her. So we're about 15 miles away from my house, nearing another small town, but still five miles away, dark highway, it's like 1 a.m., and someone is walking on the side of the road. They were wearing all black, a long parka, and walking against traffic, I honestly didn't see them till they were right up next to me. Wild, right? Yeah. Well, an hour later, we get to her house and I bring it up. We were both super spooked and she mentioned she didn't see an abandoned car anywhere either. So it's not like someone was just ditching their car. It scared the shit out of me. 
creepy. But in general, thank you so much for the podcast. <laughs> I started listening about 10 months ago when I was moving and it's nice to have a little stockpile of episodes as I get ready to move again. It's also super fun to listen to because it helps de-stress and gets me to laugh, mm. especially during all this pandemic stuff. I work in mm. a lab testing for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Holy shit. Whoa. And it's been stressful, to put it lightly. It's bananas. Yeah. We're on average testing 3,000 to 6,000 samples a day. Holy shit. Dealing with all the people saying this is a hoax, not serious, when I literally look for the virus. Oh, my God. And see how many positive samples there are. Oh, thank you all for being smart and safe about it and not giving conspiracy theories about COVID-19 any more airtime. With so much love for each and every one of you, Melissa. Wow. Damn. Thank thank you for your service. Jesus. That's crazy. That's That's amazing. Wow. Um. Wow, I can't even imagine what that's like. Thank you to any nur- nurses, grocery store workers. <laughs> I thought you were going to say nerd. I know. <laughs> Thanks to all the Thank nerds out there. Thank you to any nerds there. working in a lab. <laughs> wow. Thanks, nerd. Anyway. <laughs> oh, you're no, testing I'm samples. Yes. Saying- Thank you to the nurses and doctors and lab workers and Amazon Prime people and <laughs> grocery store workers and 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 pharmacists and everyone who has to work during this time. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your yes. service. And the nerds. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Patreon message from Chelsea, who spells her name C H E L C I E, which I've never seen. It's a that cool way. spelling. Um, thanks for all the entertainment during lockdown. Your podcast makes me feel like I'm with some friends, even when I'm listening and washing all my stupid family's dishes or folding the ungodly amount of laundry (laughs) we are still somehow accumulating, even though we haven't left the house in weeks. I will even catch myself laughing out loud and my son or husband will look at me like I'm insane. Whatever. Fuck them. I'm, (laughs) I'm getting through this quarantine with web crawlers, 90 Day Fiance, preach, uh, medical marijuana. Have you tried feels? And unnecessary feels. snacking. Feels. CBD. Great. Use use promo code web crawlers. You get 50% off. <laughs> and unnecessary, unnecessary snacking. All Same. snacking is necessary. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to the pod, Chelsea. Uh, so those are all the emails from the day. We do have a comment. We said we would shout you out if you wrote us, gave us five stars. Oh, yes, yes. Who gave us five stars? This one is from Penel P. Pad. Said, the subject is, you asked for it, and it says serial killers are hot. That's absolutely true. And also, I Thank said you. that I would maybe maybe send a picture of my feet. So I'll think about that for the rest of the day <laughs> and then perhaps DM her a picture of my feet. Well, on that note, uh, that's our mini episode for the day. Please rate and review us on iTunes. It really helps us and our podcast, and we really, really appreciate it. Um, Melissa, where can people find us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com. And we're on Twitter and Instagram at WebcrawlersPod. We're also on Reddit and we're on Facebook. Uh, you can leave us a voicemail. Yes, all of the at, above. At 626 604. 604. 626. 626. 626. 626. Boy, 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 boy. Uh, I'm <laughs> Ali Siegel. I'm Melissa. And I'm Maria. <laughs> Cool. Bye. Bye. An Erio's original. Powered by ACAST.